Oh boy, time to go get blue balls or something. I'm getting tired of these lessons, honestly. Hello, class. I'm Professor Flitwick. Welcome to Charms. Today, we will learn a very useful freezing charm called Glacius. Let's see, who would like to demonstrate? Harry Potter, just the fellow. I'm surprised Hermione doesn't just jump at the opportunity to demonstrate all the time. We can begin the Glacius Challenge. I swear, Flitwick has got to be the size of Hagrid's prostate or something. Glacius is useful for freezing a number of things, Harry. Let's begin with an Amazonian salamander, shall we? Oh shit! Take care now, Harry. You'll need to eliminate both the creature and its fire. Give it a try. Don't you think I should practice the charm on an inanimate object before taking on a fire monster? At least we have another new creature here that wasn't in the last two games. Neat blue and red flames, though. It's weird, I can just walk sideways into this round thing forever. I really wish I could cast spells from a greater distance. Not that it's very necessary or anything, but still, that's mildly frustrating that a spell occasionally misses like that. Excellent! Wow! It's solid ice! Here's the best bit, Harry. Time to go for a slide. Just use the left and right arrow keys to turn. Press the up arrow to go faster and the down arrow to slow down. Off you go. I'll see you at the end of the challenge. Hmm. If we knew the volume of water here and assumed that it was already at a near-freezing temperature while in a liquid state of matter, then we could calculate how many joules of energy is required to freeze it all into solid ice, just for the phase change rather than any additional energy needed to cool it down further to achieve the threshold of said phase change. Why the fuck would they put tiny waterfalls in the middle of these slides so that they freeze and you have to crash your way through thin sheets of ice? You could cut yourself doing that. God damn. Oh, I see. Those red fires only turn red and blue after the charm is applied. Oh, man. Great. More of these fucking little shits. Why wouldn't magical spells such as Glacius work on these guys anyways? I mean, they move around, just freeze them, they stop moving around, I don't know. Oh, I was wrong, the background flames turn completely blue, but... Yeah, nothing else around here. What? Oh god, why the fuck am I jumping straight up instead of forward? Make it stop! Okay, fuck. Ah, yeah, alright. Okay, that's better. A running jump is what I needed. Anyways, it takes 334 kilojoules of energy to freeze a single kilogram of water into ice. And there's probably metric tons worth of water flowing through this whole system of fountains and slides. That fucking frozen waterfall again! And even if you had a power plant that could... God damn it! Output 334 megawatts of energy, it wouldn't be enough to freeze all of this water instantly unless there was only, like, one metric ton of it. And there's way more than that, given the length of this slide and the number of other slides in this game. Are those pixies just going to fall backwards forever into the darkness? That's fucking scary. There's gotta be some kind of bottom to this pit, or else it would be glowing red from the exposed mantle under Earth's crust. And that's not the kind of environment you want to be in if you want to freeze water slides. Why do they have to be so picky about whether a spell worked in unlocking the store? I mean, I was obviously able to aim the wand to make the incantation in the first place, so once I release it, it should just always count. 
I could understand it not working if I suddenly moved behind something and obstructed my own line of sight, but that's not what happened this time. Man, with my fear of heights, I would not want to try this jump. Or do anything on the Carpe Retractum Challenge, either. Oh, that was a short slide. I already handled two of these at once. Give me four at a time if you're looking to make this progressively more challenging. See? Too easy. Alright. There's a shield under there. Uh, what do I do here? Well, I'll take care of these suits of armor real quick, I guess. Does that shield come up for me hitting the suit of armor, or did the game decide that it won't give it to me for several seconds just to test my patience? Okay, thank you, Iron Man. That's quite generous already. And you even threw in pumpkins, too. That's very nice. Alright, what's next? Wait, now there's a fork in the road. Or, well, slide. And there's a fucking shield on one side! That's some dirty fucking tricks and shit! You could have missed that shield and never known about it until the end. What the hell? And don't hit yourself in the face on the way down. Nothing in that room down there. What's the point of that area? So when I attack these pixies, do they just die? Am I killing sentient beings or anything? The fucking sneak attack. Ugh. Piece of shit. Although I should have seen that coming. I knew there was a fire fountain there. Whatever it is. So this one poster rolled up to reveal a secret room. But... The one on the other side just sits there. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. I don't know. Oh yeah, of course. The spongify tile. I love these staircases, the way they move around in the game. I just can't help but check this repeatedly. Why would one unlock a secret area and the other just be a normal banner? So the game has apparently downgraded its difficulty back to one fire lizard thingy again, at a time, at least. At least I'm still getting more cards. Hmm, quite the elaborate side room for 30 seconds of lesson time. I wonder how long it takes to construct such a place using magic. Probably not too long, although I don't know what would be involved in that case. Are these imps making farting noises when they throw these crackers, or are their joints just really creaky? <laughs> what are you dancing like that for? What? Four more of these demonic turd babies? Jesus. Come on. Good thing I'll probably get like eight more chocolate frogs to heal me before this level is over. Well, at least you can't miss that shield. Right? Oh, there's a spongify tile. Fortunately, none of these beans or anything else seems to accidentally fall down into pits if they're somewhat close to the chest. 
I'm sure they probably tested that extensively to make sure it never happened, and as far as I know, the items have always remained on whatever platform they were supposed to land on instead of bouncing down into a bottomless hole, never to be seen again. And beans and similar items would be bad enough, but if a card fell down there, then you may not have any way of ever obtaining it again without starting a new game. Or maybe dying on purpose, I don't know. Okay, another fork in the path, you know what that means. It means I'd better fall off the slide on purpose since I need to find out what's on the other side of that slide. Whenever, okay, there's the end of the fork. Alright, this time we'll go down the right-hand side and see if there's anything of any significance there. Stupid ice sheets. And I was fucking right! Another shield! That's so fucked up that they did that. Damn. Okay, I fell off by accident that time. <sighs> okay. So I guess it's possible that some people have played this game, gone down the wrong side on both slides without ever taking a second trip down to check the other side, and then just arrived suddenly at the end of the lesson without all ten shields. What the fuck? It's gotta suck. Harry's gonna cut that scar open all over again if he keeps crashing through those walls of ice face first. God damn it, fell off again. Uh, oh, but I saw a card around the next bend, though, so at least I know to look for that again. I'm trying to wrap up script writing, editing, rendering, and uploading these episodes every day until the series is finished, while at the same time working for eight hours is... It's just getting slightly stressful. I might regret sticking to the schedule where I feel like I have to keep up with one episode per day once I get started. I miss being able to sleep in for 9 or 10 hours sometimes, you know? There's the card I spotted earlier. It's gotta suck just busting through half a dozen of those ice sheets in one lesson. Great, now the shield acts like a moving target. That would fucking suck some green shit if you got to the end of the lesson with all eight shields at that point, only to miss that ninth one by accident. You'd have to do everything all over again, and I doubt you'd necessarily even have enough reaction time to fall off the slide intentionally to try again during the same session. The bee bonus room. Have fun, Harry. Yay, all ten shields. Now I get to do the same thing for a third time. Which is great in terms of the gameplay experience, I suppose, but it's not that great for making a video. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna say this third time around. Sure, I could edit out the part of the video that I don't find very interesting, but now I have that arbitrary rule where I don't want to do that. I did make an exception, of course, when I made the mistake of forgetting to save the game and had to play part of the Carpe Retractum challenge over again, but that's different enough from repeating similar portions of the game to warrant its own exception, I suppose. You know, I think these later Bean Bonus Room encounters had more floating pumpkin pasties and cauldron cakes that you could collect. Poor Ron. I think Hermione's was more similar to Harry's in that regard. Let's see, it was the 20th anniversary of the Harry Potter franchise recently. That was cool. Sounds about right, actually. I do remember in second grade, after lunch and recess, our teacher would read Harry Potter to us for several minutes every day. I know I enjoyed listening to her read the books, and I remember that at the time only the first three had been released at that point since I was in second grade during the 1999-2000 school year, but... Unfortunately, I'm not sure I really understood what was going on with the plot back then. I had and continue to have some issues with attention span. Either that, or I just forgot about most of the story for several years. I do remember getting into a slight bit of trouble where, imitating the description of how Peter Pettigrew pointed with his middle finger since he didn't have his index finger anymore, I pointed at someone with my own middle finger, not realizing that that actually meant something. I think whichever kid I pointed at was only slightly shocked, though. Come to think of it, I don't recall that other kid ever telling the teacher about it, so I probably didn't get into too much trouble for that. Not really sure. So, how was it? You can 
freeze things now. I could slide everywhere. Oh, wicked! And salamanders the size of Hagrid. That's such a goddamn lie, Harry. If anything, they were slightly smaller than you. You can have another go at the Glacier's Challenge if you want, Harry. Or we can come back later. Seriously, why the fuck would I want to do a lesson again when I already got all ten shields the first time around? Now leave me alone while I attack these suits of armor a few times. Do the lesson again. Unbelievable, guys. What were you thinking? How about it, Harry? Feel like another go at the Glacier's Challenge? No! What did I just fucking say, Ron?